violent storm broke out over the area of Westminster tonight at about... Oh, excuse me. Here is a late flash. <laughs> And that was the sound of another clangor being dropped by the men from the ministry. I see. Uh, and this arm? That goes the same, the other side. That's right. <laughs> now, bring them both together in front. Mm. Haven't you ever done this before, Mr. Love? <laughs> well, I, I, I've tried, but usually I'm not allowed to because I'm so awkward. <laughs> I can see you've done it a lot, haven't you, Mildred? <laughs> Shirts. <laughs> Is there anything else I could do for you, Mr. Lab? No, thanks, Mildred. That's the lot. There we are. I'm all set now for the weekend. Oh, I bet you'll have a smashing time. Oh, just think. I'm not be with Lord and Lady Drawbridge in their country home. Yes, well, one learns to take things like that in one stride, Mildred. Oh, 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 oh. It's a pity you didn't learn to take a suitcase in your stride, too. <laughs> Good morning, number two. Good morning, Hildred. Good morning, Mr. Morning, Lentown. number one. All right, number two. There's no need to grovel on the floor when I come in. Just, <laughs> just a deferential bow. Number Bell one. down, Mr. Lennox Brown. He tripped over his thingy. <laughs> I knew a chap who did that on Victoria Station when there was a train coming in. Platform 8, it was. It was a terrible business. Terrible. It was all late getting home. <laughs> is the General Assistance Department? Yes, it is, yes. Well, I, I like some. Some what? Uh, assistant. <laughs> well, uh, what form of assistance? Form RB20, WB65 or L19? Aye. Well, uh, if you would like to choose by colour, we have white forms, buff forms, green forms. Number two, number two, mm. would you mind? I'll handle this. Now, Mr. Uh, Mr. Nathaniel Satisfied. I see. <laughs> well, uh, Mr. Uh, Satisfied. Uh, Satisfied. <laughs> oh, well, all right, Mr. Satisfied. Now, what exactly can we do for you? I, I want to get back into my profession. No, and what is that? I'm a jockey. Yes, a jockey. <laughs> I've been victimised. For years it's been going on. Years. Conspiring to keep me off the court. But why, Mr. Uh, Saffold Swed? Yeah, they couldn't fit my name on the number board. Ooh, well, that's cruelty. Injustice. I think it's victimisation. <laughs> Yes, it's all of them. Yeah, but look, what has it got to do with us? Oh, I spoke to a bloke at the Ministry of Labour, and he put me on to another bloke. And this bloke put me on to another bloke called... Uh, let's see now. Uh, uh, pumpkin. Mm. <laughs> He's only a temporary assistant clerk or something. Oh, pu Pumpkin? You mean Pitkin, the permanent undersecretary? Oh, yes. <laughs> Yes, that's it, yes. Anyway, he told me to see you to help me get back in the saddle. He said you've been taking him for a ride for years. I see. Well, look, in that case, Mr. Satterswaite, just leave it with us for the weekend and we'll come up with something. General Assistance Department, Lennox Brown leaving. I'm here speaking. <laughs> leaving for where, Lennox Brown? Ooh. <laughs> Just off the weekend, Sir Gregory, you know, a bit of golf, pot around the garden, tea with the vicar. And, and a trip to London Airport. Oh, no, no, Sir Gregory, Penelope wouldn't like that. She was frightened by an aeroplane once, was he, and the... Uh... Your wife doesn't have to go, that it's brown. You do. There's a chap called O'Toole arriving from Dublin. He's coming to buy horses. Could be a key figure in our export of bloodstock, so it's important to keep him happy. You've got to meet this old tool and butter him up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Butter him up a bit of what, Sir Gregory? <laughs> oh, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, I see, yes, good. I mean, you have to look after him for the weekend and deliver him to my office on Monday morning. On an expense account, of course, Sir Gregory. Naturally. Expense is absolutely no object in this case. All 30 shillings from the cash out. You mean, oh... <laughs> you mean, oh... What's that? What's that? I said, you mean old Blankensop, the cashier. Now, uh, don't forget how important this assignment is, Lennox Brown. Oh, tool is due to arrive at 11 tomorrow morning. Be there. Oh, yes, of course, Sir Gregory. And do have a happy weekend, won't you? How oh, dare we be cashier? <clears throat> Mildred! Uh, yes, Mr. Lennox Brown? Ask Mr. Lamb to come through, will you? He can't. He's off. He's taking the drawbridges at his stride. <laughs> He's, uh, he's doing what? He's spending the weekend with Lord and Lady Drawbridge at their ancestral abode. The Drawbridges? I, I thought they'd gone into the stately homes, Lark. You know, ten mob a carload and free parking for Macintoshes under the Chippendale. Well, that's where he's gone. Pity. Oh, well, that means I'll have to go to the airport myself tomorrow morning. Uh, all right, Mildred, uh, you can button everything up now. Hey! <laughs> I, uh, I mean, you can put everything away. <laughs> I... <laughs> That is, you, you can close the office, Mildred. Well, here we are in England at last. Bad cess to them. Are the bombs safely through then, Seamus? That they are. I told the customs they were Irish-sized golf balls. The stupid English wouldn't know the difference. <laughs> It is a big place, this London. Mavoni, this isn't London yet. This is only the airport. Oh, you mean there's more? Ah. <laughs> and never be forgetting that you're in a foreign country among foreign people. I remember. May all their potatoes have cross eyes. <laughs> I'll drink to that. Just a drop of the hard stuff to take the taste of this country out of my mouth. Ah, lovely. Now be on your guard now, Mavoni. It'll be one of their top security men they'll be sending to meet us. Now, why would they be doing that? You're supposed to be over here to buy a few horses, not to drop a few bombs. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but it's nasty, suspicious minds the English have, with no sense of brotherly love. May they all suffocate in their own smog. And may they never go across the sea to Ireland. <laughs> hey, I'll drink to that. Just another drop of the hard stuff to clear me throat of the mention of the English. <laughs> ah, it's wonderful stuff it is. Oh, uh, excuse me, uh, have you seen anyone who looks as though he comes from Ireland? Uh, he'll be dressed a bit like you, I should think. Uh, you know, green tweeds, a green pork pie hat and a red waistcoat with a, <laughs> with a sort of shamrock in his lapel and carrying a twisted stick. I'm from Ireland. I said, are you really? What a coincidence. <laughs> well, uh, you might know the chap I'm looking for. His name is O'Too. Oh, I'm O'Toole. Well, I'm dashed the same name, too, jolly good. <laughs> I could even be the same man. Could you? Do you mean you're Mr. Seamus O'Toole from Valley Me Fine? The same. Well, 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 how do you do, Mr. O'Toole? I'm Lennox Brown of the Ministry, you know, and England welcomes you. Ah, and the back of my hand to her, too. <laughs> That's a very quaint expression. Thank you very much. This is uh, Miss Mavoni McConnell of Macra McKinney Muldoon. Really? I don't suppose you get many letters, do you? I mean, <laughs> I, uh, I mean the back of my hand to you too, Miss O'Connor. <laughs> and the toe of me boot to you, you pie faced loon. Oh, really? What? <laughs> uh, you, you, you mustn't be taking offence, though, Mr. Lennox Brown. It is an old Macla McKinney Muldoon greeting. Oh, oh, I see. Look, I hear you're interested in thoroughbreds, Mr. O'Toole. Ah, that I am. Nothing like English bloodlines. If it's blood you're after, it is, isn't it? That's it. River to it. Right? <laughs> oh, I mean, it runs like a river through the noble veins of your horses. How charmingly expressed. Uh, well, uh, I hope your visit is very successful. Oh, ah. Uh, <laughs> It'll go off with a bang, I'm quite sure. <laughs> and uh, how would you like to spend your time, Miss McConnell? Oh, I'm here to help Mr. O'Toole with his, uh, with his reports. Oh, uh, splendid. Yes, sir. I hope they'll be good reports. Oh, that they will be. You'll hear them. Hear them? <laughs> you mean your reports will be broadcast? I don't know what, what she means is you'll hear about them. But, um, but with a bit of luck, we'll let the BBC have one, too. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Well, look, uh, 
I'm looking after you for the weekend, so uh, shall we go? Uh, well, would you care for a drop of the hard stuff first? Just the breath of old oil. And... What a jolly good idea. Thank you very much. Strained bog juice. <laughs> oh, even your best friends wouldn't tell you about this breath of old Ireland. <laughs> ah, but it's the grand stuff to put hair on your back and muscles on your muscles. <laughs> Death to the cowardly English. Huh? Bless them. <laughs> weekend. Oh, what a party, eh? You up there on the coal shed roof shouting out that you were Apollo 12? <laughs> and that we all had to leave the launching pad? Mm. Oh, it's a pity we did, really, you know. Someone might have been able to catch you. <laughs> How many stitches? Where? Well, that'll keep you out of orbit for a bit, won't it? <laughs> And I'll see you tonight. Goodbye. Funny. I could have sworn he fell on his head. <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Lamb. It's your turn to bring the suggested biscuits today. I hope you didn't forget them. Uh, well, actually, Mildred, I, uh, I can't afford them today. Can't afford them? No, uh, not after the weekend at Drawbridge Towers. It cost me a shilling to park my bicycle, sixpence to have my bag carried upstairs, five shillings a time for meals at the refectory cafeteria, and threepence in the slot every time I... Uh, well... <laughs> well, you know. Oh, what a flippin' liberty. I thought you were a guest. I was. They let me off the entrance fee. <laughs> oh, well, I can't help you, Mr. Lamb. Bernard's been at me all weekend. Has he? <laughs> I'll be able to help you out. Good morning, Mildred. Good morning, number two. Uh, good morning, number I, one. Uh, I, uh, I say you don't happen to have a few shillings to spare, do you, number two? I've had rather a heavy weekend. Well, I'm afraid not, number one. Actually, I was rather hoping oh, that pity. you... Oh, never a pity, pity, pity. Never mind, we, we'll have some more luncheon vouchers printed and we'll sell those. <laughs> uh, wouldn't you like to hear about my weekend, number one? Your weekend? You haven't been traipsing about London with a couple of leprechauns eating Irish stew and... <laughs> Drinking Irish whiskey and looking for McNamara's band. Did you find it? Mildred, just confine yourself to the essentials, will you? Right, you then. I'll go and put it on. But there are no suggested biscuits today. Uh, what exactly were you doing over the weekend, number one? Visiting Flanagan Steakhouse, the Shamrock Inn, Kelly's Bar, Irish Mix and the Old Vic. Hmm. I see. The old Vic. What was showing there? A new play by Sean O'Shaughnessy called Shiver Michelin. <laughs> We're very lucky, you know. Number one, missing all the bombs. What bombs? Well, haven't you heard? Someone's been dropping homemade bombs all over the West End. That's very careless of them. Did they get them back? Well, they went off. <laughs> they went off, number one. And all of them were near those places that you just mentioned. Well, don't look at me, number two. I didn't do it. Look, there's something much more important than bombs to worry about. Look, have you seen the Times this morning? Not yet. What's happened? They've left out the crossword. <laughs> and here is the news read by Mortimer Thrip. <laughs> Wilhelm Ditz, a professional strongman from West Germany, astounded observers at Clapham Junction today when he performed several remarkable feats of strength. To end his display, he lifted a disused engine from a siding and dragged it across the main line to Brighton. <laughs> In so doing, he dislocated both his back and the entire southern region train service. <laughs> A series of explosions has mystified residents of the West End of London during the past few days, fortunately without loss of life. Scotland Yard attaches little importance to these incidents, including an anonymous phone call which said that the BBC was high on the list of the saboteur's targets. Officials at Broadcasting House. <laughs> we 
apologize for the technical hitch. <laughs> and continue now with our St. Patrick's Day program. <laughs> this is the crucial week in the plan, number two, August the 9th to the 15th. Yes, everything hinges around those two dates. It's go in that week or not at all. And yes, after that, it's a question of sitting down and waiting till everybody's back safely, and then you can take your holiday. I think I'll go in August. Then I won't have to wait so long until Christmas. <laughs> Ah, there you are, Lennox Brown. Oh, hello, Sir Gregory. How nice to hear from you. I'm here in your office, you clown. <laughs> oh. oh, I see. Uh, hello, Sir Gregory. Um, uh, pull up a phone. I, I mean, take a phone. <laughs> Thank you, Lennox Brown. We have a difficult situation on our hands. Oh, yes, I know, Sir Gregory. Look, Lamb and I have just been discussing it. Look, if I go on leave in July, and Lamb takes it in August... <laughs> leave? Did you say leave? There are more important things to consider than leave. Besides, I don't go until next week. Oh. <laughs> Bad luck, Sir Gregory. Thank you. It'll be a couple of months since I had a decent break. <laughs> now that it's down. About this Irishman, fool. Oh, too, Sir Gregory. <laughs> well, whether he does or not, he's being difficult. <laughs> He's challenged us to a race. Well, I'll take him on, Sir Gregory. I won the three-legged race at Coots Hill Prep two years running. <laughs> he doesn't want a three-legged race, Lamb. He wants a four-legged race on horses. Did you win any horse races at Coots Hill Prep? Uh, well, no, Sir Gregory. Only the Grand National. I had sixpence each way on Carhu and I... Uh... <laughs> Lamb, did you say you weren't going on leave until August? Uh, yes, that's right, Sir Gregory. Pity. <laughs> now look here, Alex Brown. This chap of fool. Oh, tool, Sir Gregory. I dare say, yes, I dare say. Well, he says he won't buy any English thoroughbreds until they've been proved better than the Irish. He's got a little Irish feel. Oh, and what a beauty. <laughs> uh, her name's Mavoreen McConnell of Mattel Mahenny Muldoon. Her name, Alex Brown, is Molly Malone. But, but O'Toole told me it was Mavoreen McConnell. Her name is Molly Malone, and she has four legs. Four legs? <laughs> I can guarantee you that she has two of everything. I, I mean, I... <laughs> She has four legs, one at each corner. She's a racer. <laughs> oh, I see, yes, of course. And we have to find one to beat her, so you'd better get on with it. Oh, and another thing, this chap's Sewell. Oh, tool, Sir Gregory. <laughs> well, whatever he does, you've got to find him an Irish jockey. <laughs> got that? An Irish jockey, he demands. You see, so you've got plenty to keep you busy. Uh, but, Sir Gregory, when is the race? On Saturday. Well, that's the day after tomorrow. Is it? Doesn't time fly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and uh, where will the race take place? Around the grounds of Drawbridge Towers. Oh, by the way, Lennox Brown, you know what will happen if we don't find something to beat the Irish filly, don't you? Yes, Sir Gregory, we'll be belly unmucky. <laughs> uh, he's done it again, yes, number one. Yes, oh, right, number two, read back. Yeah. Oh, this is impossible, number one. How are we going to do everything Sir Gregory says? You know, I'm beginning to believe that he doesn't really want us here. Now, what gave you that idea? <laughs> now, look, the important thing is that that Irish filly mustn't win, right? Yes, but how on earth can we ever guarantee that? All we have to do is to uh, arrange one or two things in advance. Hmm? What about the jockeys? One of them has to be Irish. Hmm. And an Irish jockey who can't possibly win. I think I know just a chap. <laughs> 